what is up guys welcome back to my youtube channel it is zachary reality and happy tuesday thank you guys so much for being back for another weekly review slash recap of the bachelorette and claim to fame i mean obviously you guys are already waiting for me to acknowledge the hat i got it today at target and I thought it was kind of cute, so I thought I would just, like, put it on for the video to add a little extra fun. Well, first I got this hat, because I saw it when I walked in, and, like, nobody has a green hat that's, like, a fedora. So, welcome back to the channel. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you guys are new here, please subscribe down below. <laughs> So I'm recording this at night again. I did it last week because I was going to Vegas, so I wanted to get it done. But I kind of just like recording now at night, at least now for this week, because I want to get it up for you guys right in the morning and because it's like fresh in my brain. So I just watched the last three hours of television. So let's get right into it. And I figured we start off with Claim to Fame first this week, just because that was so shocking. So shocking. It was so shocking at the end with Olivia. Wow, no one saw that coming with Jenny McCarthy being her aunt. I really thought that they were going to pick Chris. I thought they were going to all pick Chris because he's such a threat, but it really shows you how many Alliance members Chris has in the house. Like, this, the Alliance seems to be Chris, Monet, and Gabriel, but I just feel like everybody is, like, threatened by Chris, and, like, every week it's like, what's Chris gonna do? What's Chris gonna do? And I originally said, like, last week, I was like, I kind of feel like Chris's storyline is gonna crash and burn, but now we're down to the final six. Like, what is gonna happen with Chris? This is, I'm just most invested in Chris's storyline. This is Chris's season. I hope that Chris wins. I am rooting for Chris the entire way. Okay, let's break this episode down. Let's go from the beginning real quick because Frankie and Kevin, this was in my notes. Do they read off a teleprompter when they are explaining the challenges? The challenges? Are they reading off a teleprompter because they are just so precise and they're just like, how do you memorize that? Um, I put in my notes also to remind everybody how much I want to be a host. I literally really want to host a game show or a dating show or just some type of reality show like that is truly my dream job so like just like how kevin and frankie were doing that like that's what i want to do for a different type of show but that will also have like more drama um so just putting that out there if anyone is listening and can help make my dreams come true just letting y'all know um so the challenge was a heart racing test and i liked how they said heart racing and not lie detector because the rules for this is that you're going to go into a room and then everyone is going to be in the other room asking you questions i thought it was yes or no but then it got really specific and instead of a lie detector test it was like a heart racing test to see how much your heart is beating when you're being asked the questions and i guess this is kind of of an indicator of someone's lying or not because Kevin and Frankie did say that you are allowed to lie so I was like convinced that Carson couldn't lie and that she was telling the truth Carson did so well this episode oh my god I was literally screaming for Carson she played everyone because I wrote I'm like Carson is basically admitting to who she is related to Jeff Gordon like, I was like, Carson just doesn't care. She's ready to go. Ugh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But as everyone is on to Chris the most, I wrote Carson basically admitted who she was. They are on to JR with a rapper or NBA star. I think it was Gabriel who was like, if JR is related to Little Nas, like, I'm screaming. And honestly, me too. I hope he is. Um, I wrote Olivia is the underdog. I did not expect Olivia to go home this week. So shocking. Beyond shocking. So Gabriel is so likable. He also is giving main character energy. I feel like Gabriel, Carson, and Chris, like one of them I want to win. Those are the three people that I'm rooting for and that I think deserve it the most. Monet, I feel like, and JR are kind of falling behind. But Monet is in it. She's doing amazing. And she is close with Chris and Gabriel, so she's in the inner alliance. Hugo, I feel like, is like getting the silly edit. So no one's really going to take him too seriously. And I think they just figured him out this week, Chris, Monet, Olivia, that he is related to Jimmy Carter. Monet, they think Steve Harvey, which would be so iconic. <sighs> That would be so iconic. I cannot wait to find out who everyone is related to. I said this last week, you could just Google, but I'm choosing not to Google. Like, I'm being so careful what I read on the internet when I look up this show to, like, find things out. And I'm just, like, not trying to know anything. So, Olivia and Chris. I just didn't... Who made those rules? Like, it just kind of felt, like, strategic of the producers, potentially. Like, how did they get the lowest score? Did I miss something? Did I blink? Did I go to the bathroom? Like, why did a Chris and Olivia lose this round? Either way, I thought it was very interesting because Chris, like, main character vibes, I was really interested to see what would happen with 
with Chris if he was the guesser. And like I said earlier, nobody wanted to vote for him because I think they're all scared of him. I think they all just feel so loyal to him. He has so many clues. And like like I said, every week in the coming attractions, what's Chris going to do? They're on to Chris, but he's still here. And now he's in the top six. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. I hope he wins. Um... So Olivia gets voted as the guesser and she decides to pick Carson, which I think was the safe bet because everyone's kind of been onto Carson for a while. She's been on the chopping block for a while. Like Carson has been hanging on every single week. This was Carson's week where she turned it around and became like main character energy, like has a chance to win. She is so good. Like I felt like Carson was always just like the girl who was just like trying to stay in as long as possible fighting for dear life. But now this is, this was a switch. I'm so into it. I'm so invested. This was such a switch. Yes, Carson. Um, Carson tells Olivia, like, I'd rather you send me home than anyone else. And like, I am literally Googling Jeff Gordon right now at the commercial because I'm like convinced that it is Jeff Gordon, that Olivia's right, and that Carson's going home. Predictable. And then it was so mind blowing. So if you don't know who Jeff Gordon is, who is not Carson's celebrity because Olivia was wrong. Um, Jeff Gordon, I had to look him up. He's an American stock car racing executive and former professional stock car racing driver. He raced full time from the 1993 to 2015, driving the number 24 Chevrolet for the Hendrick Motorsports in the former NASCAR Winston Cup Series. <laughs> Okay, so he is regarded as one of the best and most influential drivers in NASCAR history, helping the sport reach mainstream popularity. So that's who Jeff Gordon is, and everyone thought Carson was related to him. Turns out we still don't know who Carson is related to, but Olivia's relative was revealed, Jenny McCarthy. So I know Jenny McCarthy because she hosts on The Masked Singer. She's one of the judges on The Masked Singer. Obviously, she does so many different things in her career. But um, you guys know how I work for Fox. So I've been to The Masked Singer twice. And the last time I was there, I interviewed Jenny McCarthy. And I'm actually going back to The Masked Singer this Wednesday because it's a new season. So I don't know if Jenny's going to be there. I don't think she's going to be there. But if um, I'm able to run into her, I'm definitely going to ask her what her thoughts were of her niece, Olivia, on Claim to Fame. The Hello. queen of The Masked Singer. Yeah, I, I, I am. Well, we know that. We know that. <laughs> I mean, I just didn't expect that. It really came out of nowhere. So it was wrong. Carson played them. Olivia was eliminated. And Olivia's relative is Jenny McCarthy. So now we're down to the final six. Carson, Chris, you go J.R. Cabriel and Monet. Oh my God. This show is amazing. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think of the episode. I'm going to try and get Olivia for an interview since she was the eliminated guest. So obviously stay tuned. I'll let you know how that, if that works out for me. What do you guys think is going to happen next? It seems like there's only going to be a few more episodes. The finale is, let me just Google it actually, because... We need to like know. Claim to fame finale air date. I'm like so specific when I Google. Oh my God, it's supposed to go till August 28th. The Bachelorette, I saw that the finale was the 21st. So Claim to Fame is going a week later. Wow, there's an extra episode of Claim to Fame. Okay, wonder why. Wonder how that's gonna go. There's six guys, there's six people left on Claim to Fame. Three people now left on The Bachelorette. So let's get into our Bachelorette recap, shall we? So Bachelorette. Let's get the notes out because I felt like overall the episode was so cheesy and sappy, especially in the beginning. I really enjoyed Dutton's hometown. Um, we'll get into all the hometowns, but I just felt like it was so corny. Oh my God, with the music, the family, everyone is just so happy and in love. Like it is just such a corny and sappy show, hometowns. Like it reminds you just how like, you know, it's just such a show about love, just a, a good old love show. Uh, my family would be so much more drama on a hometown date if I was ever on the show. Like we are not, everyone's so nice, I think. Like not saying my family's not nice, but we just all have attitudes and we're all so sassy and it's just so serious, these hometowns. And I'm like, my family would just not be that serious and that corny, but these families were. So I did note that Charity's parents have been married for 48 years. So that's literally crazy. So Aaron B got the first date. He has a brother who has full support of him, but they were worried that the mom Mom and the dad would be a little bit more skeptical. Aaron's mom did ask if she would say yes if he proposed today and Charity said no, which honestly like good for her for being honest. Like there's four guys left. Like it's not happening right away. So that was just like a moment. Um, there was a really touching moment with Aaron and his dad when he was like, oh my God, like my dad's so proud of me. He loves me. I appreciate him. And it was just, it was really sweet and touching and cute. Everyone had like a moment with one of their relatives that is just like so cute, you know, so wholesome. Um, so then they ended the night at a high school stadium and like we're wearing matching jackets it was a cute date but um Aaron and B you know spoiler alert he ended up going home which I mean I feel like 
you know, we knew that Joey and Dutton are definitely top two. So I kind of feel like it was going to be Xavier or Aaron B. But like Aaron B's, you know, hometown date went perfect. It went great. Like nothing was wrong. There was no red flags. It's just clear that the connection is just behind the other three guys. <laughs> So, oh, and they went to Houston, Texas. I'm so into geography. So I made sure to make sure I knew where everyone was from in my notes. So they went to Houston, Texas. Okay, let's talk about Joey, the cutest one on the show. Ah! Um, He had a tennis date, which is just like amazing because I love tennis. It's my favorite sport. I grew up playing tennis. I've been playing tennis since I was three. Their hometown was in Pennsylvania, even though Joey currently lives in Hawaii. So the uncle comes in and is like immediately skeptical. He comes in on the tennis date. Charity's learning how to play tennis. She almost hits Joey in the face. Charity, be more careful, please. So the uncle just is like, I don't feel like Joey is being super genuine which I thought was just so interesting. Joey's uncle really threw him under the bus. And I'll be interested to see what happens at After the Final Rose when Joey is most likely number two and his uncle is in the audience. And if Jesse Palmer, if he even shows up, who knew he was still on this show? <laughs> Um, if he asks a question to Joey's uncle about the drama he caused. I mean, Joey's uncle did not only cause drama immediately, but he caused drama, you know, with Joey, with Charity, with everyone. Like, Joey's uncle was the drama of this episode. Like, what? Did anyone else feel like that? Ugh, all this drama with Joey's uncle. What is his name? We need to name him. What is Joey's uncle's name? Uncle's... I can't spell on, oh my God, they think I'm talking about Full House on The Bachelorette. We are young. I'm gonna have to like literally click an article to find out. Oh, this is why I wish I paid attention more. Okay, shout out to Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> Joey's Uncle Joe. His Uncle Joe. It took me a minute and a half to find out that it was Uncle Joe. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Boing. Okay, so Charity wants to tell Joey that she's falling in love with him because she's like obsessed with him and he's so cute. Charity told Joey's sister Carly that she was falling in love with Joey. They um, just like had such a good moment. Emotional mom, emotional moment with Joey and his mom. Uncle said Joey wasn't genuine and that he's a people pleaser and Joey was confident and then a very emotional goodbye from Joey and Joey got really nervous about the date and this was the first time that Joey was like nervous the entire season which obviously is like planting the storyline for Joey's epic heartbreak that's going to be next week or the week after because we all know it's coming since she's obviously picking Dutton. Um, but Uncle Joey said that she wasn't, sh Uncle Joe said that Joey wasn't genuine or may he might be holding back and that he's a people pleaser. That is such a roast. Uncle Joe roasted Joey. That is a roast to call your nephew a people pleaser to the girl he's dating. Just threw him under the bus. His uncle knows. And I think because Joey is such a people pleaser, because I'm going to take his uncle's word for it, he probably doesn't even realize that that he might just like trying to like please Charity because clearly Charity is in love with Joey. And like Charity said it first before she said she was falling in love with anyone else. She said, I'm falling in love with Joey. If Joey knows Charity really wants to make it work. And I mean, of course he has feelings for her and I'm just being all hypothetical. But like, I mean, Joey, your uncle knows best. Your uncle knows you better than everyone. I'm going to take the uncle's word for it. And I kind of said that in a recap once, didn't I? I was like, I think Charity likes Joey more than Joey likes Charity. Because I noticed when they were kissing that he just wasn't fully engaged and all into it. I mean, Joey is going to be an interesting one to figure out. I can't wait to hear his perspective on things at the after the final rose. And I hope that he goes to paradise. I can't wait to see like what he's all about because I do feel like he's holding back a little bit too during this he just seems like a really sweet nice guy and of course they make him look perfect but there's definitely more to him that we just have not uncovered yet you know like what if he does have an agenda what if he wants to be the next bachelor let's get into xavier he is taking charity to cleveland ohio um they went knitting i thought that was such a cute idea and a cute date i don't think i've ever knitted before but now all of a sudden i'm influenced to want to go knitting Maybe next week we'll be knitting on my channel. Um, I said the most fun family. I felt like when Xavier's family came on, it was just really refreshing. Xavier's family, there was just a fresh energy where they were just like so excited to be there and it just felt like an instant party and just like so much fun. I thought that it was interesting when Xavier told his mom, I don't know if she's gonna choose me, but I'm, you know, I'm really into her. Did he say I love her? Um, he said he's falling for her. And his mom is like, just don't hold back. Like even if you get your heart broken, Xavier, just like put it all out there. Don't hold back and just go for it. And that's exactly what's going to happen because I think Xavier is going to go home next week.
And then Dutton's hometown date, which is in Fresno, California. And I'm definitely going to put up a map because I know Fresno. It's like an hour or two north of LA. I've never been. Maybe I've like driven through because I've road tripped to San Francisco before. But I know a few people in LA who are from Fresno. Like I know like five or six people who are from Fresno. So I'm definitely familiar with Fresno vibes. Um, But what is amazing about Dutton's hometown date. Dutton's hometown date was my favorite date of the night. First of all, his grandma is an icon. So funny. So much love. I love seeing his grandma hug Charity and be like, I love you. I love you. It was just so fun to see a grandmother so full of love. She is cooking in the kitchen for everyone because the parents were out of town. They were in Nigeria. And it's just like that grandma is just so full of love. She reminds me of my grandma. I mean, there is nothing like a grandma that just has so much love. I hope that Dutton's grandma sees this YouTube video. I just want to give you the biggest hug because you just seem so full of love and life and happiness. And I just want to hug you so bad. So somebody send this to Dutton's grandma. He has three sisters, two brothers. And then there was two surprise guests. And I love how understanding Charity was when Dutton said, you know, my parents aren't going to be here because they go to Nigeria every year for four to six weeks. And I do believe the producers, you know, reached out to Dutton's family and they wanted to surprise him. And I do believe that they probably paid for the flight from Nigeria. Not that that matters. The parents still obviously love Dutton and came and the mom was fabulous. Oh my God, Dutton's whole family. Can I come to dinner? Like the mom was so much fun. She had so much personality and it just feels like Charity fit in so well. Oh my God, I'm sold. Charity and Dutton, I want them to last forever. They're such a cute couple. They ended up doing the movie theater date at the end. And then that was the hometown. So Jesse talks to Charity about the rose ceremony and all the drama. And, you know, everyone's like, wait, Jesse's still on the show. And then it, they're doing the rose ceremony at like an airplane center. Why? Where are they? I don't even know where they are, but this is a sick airplane and it's amazing. And then Dutton gets the rose, then Xavier, then Joey. And Joey keeps on saying how nervous he is. So I'm assuming there will be a big conversation and blow up next week between Charity and Joey. And maybe that's what they're teasing because clearly, or it could be something with Xavier, hopefully not Dutton, but clearly the drama is supposed to heat up. Now it's going to heat up in the finale with Fantasy Suites. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. You guys obviously know my prediction. Um, I heard the Men Tell All was filmed last week. So wonder how that went. Cannot wait to hear who is going to be announced for Bachelor in Paradise. I feel like the cast list for that could be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Oh my God, guys, I can't wait for Bachelor in Paradise. Guys, the cast list is coming out. It's going to come out, guys. It's going to come out soon. The cast for Special Forces, the cast list for that just came out. So if you guys are interested in that, I can totally do another video on that, giving my opinion. So just please comment down below if you want me to. And super excited about, like, I don't know, what's to come, but the shows and my summer and just life. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Go check out my most recent interview with Randall and Shanique from The Ultimatum if you guys have not already. And, you know, follow me on Instagram and on TikTok and on X. It's no longer called Twitter, it's called X. Um, everything is at Zachary Reality. And help me get to 12,000 subscribers, guys. We're almost there. Can we get there by the end of the month? I feel like we got this, okay? I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.